It has been more than 30 years since the All-Valley Tournament between Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence in The Karate Kid. The saga between Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai continues more than 30 years later in Cobra Kai on Netflix. The series turns our perception of hero and villain upside down and re-examines past events heavily through the eyes of Johnny Lawrence. Throughout the course of the first two seasons, the battle between Daniel, Johnny, and their young dojo students has made us all pick sides. Miyagi-Do vs. Cobra Kai But are there any clear heroes? No, Sensei! In this video, we will examine the reasons why there are no real heroes in Cobra Kai. It was the kick heard around the world, the crane kick. We begin Cobra Kai with a flashback to Daniel's tournament win using the infamous move, leading to the defeat of Johnny, Kreese, and the entire Cobra Kai dojo. Flash forward to present day, and Johnny still hasn't gotten over what he claims to be Daniel's illegal move that cost him the tournament and ultimately led to their lives leading two paths. It was an illegal kid. Daniel, who is a successful family man, and Johnny, who is the exact opposite. The two are positioned as each other's yin to their yang. In Cobra Kai, we learn that Daniel owns a series of successful car deals dealerships and is the pillar of the community. Meanwhile, Johnny is out of work and we find him passed out on his floor after a night of heavily drinking everyone's favorite 80s brand beer, Coors Banquet. Johnny's car is soon damaged after a hit and run by Daniel's daughter Sam and her friends, bringing us towards a literal crash between these two old karate foes. We quickly learn that there is no love lost between these two, and they begin to relive their past through their younger protégés, Miguel and Robbie. Johnny's version of past events makes us question whether Daniel was the hero we all thought him to be. What qualities make a true hero? Daniel introduces Johnny to his cousin Louie as the guy whose face he kicked in. I kicked his face. Would a hero taunt an opponent after they defeat Defeated them? Johnny explains to Miguel that Daniel has a history of sucker punching and pouring water all over him on Halloween in the men's bathroom. Each episode is a tournament of Daniel, Johnny, and their young trainees fighting with each other to prove that the other is in the wrong. Strike first. Strike hard. No mercy. These are the teachings and motto of the Cobra Kai Dojo. With teachings like these, are Sensei's Johnny and Kreese setting up their students for injury and failure? It's safe to say that the teaching techniques of both dojos are a little unorthodox. Even Kreese is surprised to see that Johnny has one of their lessons take place inside the hull of a cement tanker. The lesson only gets more intense when Johnny has his students pair up and practice headbutting each other. We would say Hawk and his Mohawk for the win in that battle. Meanwhile, in the warring Miyagi Dojo, Daniel is also up in the intensity of the level of his lessons by having his students train for hours in both sweltering hot and then sub-zero conditions. Daniel takes training to the next level by having his students train in a walk-in freezer in their underpants. Remember the time when a karate lesson was learning how to paint a fence and wax a car? The times are a-changing. Now, both Johnny and Daniel are preparing for the upcoming war, a war which Kreese foreshadows when he visits Daniel at Miyagi-Do. Practicing the three tenets of Cobra Kai ultimately leads to Tori striking first during the season two finale school brawl. Daniel teaches his students that karate is a form of self-defense and should only be used for self-defense. However, Daniel himself nearly strikes Johnny first after Johnny accuses Daniel of sending bikers to trash his muscle car. The fight is stopped by Daniel's wife, Amanda, who diffuses the situation by offering the two enemies a seat at the breakfast table instead. The important lesson here is that a good breakfast consisting of flapjacks and OJ can solve any war. Daniel has shown that he doesn't always take Mr. Miyagi's teachings to heart. This is evident when he provokes and karate kicks the boba tea out of the hands of his competitor in the showroom of his dealership in front of all of his customers. Cobra Kai has shown us that Daniel, Johnny, and Kreese do not have clean records as senseis. Their students are trained with one goal in mind, to defeat the enemy, the opposing dojo. Robbie as a weapon. When Daniel and Robbie first meet, Daniel is unaware that Robbie is Johnny's son. However, by the time of the All-Valley Tournament, Daniel knows that Robbie is Johnny's estranged son and pounces on the opportunity to coach Robbie when he enters the tournament without an assigned dojo. Daniel then begins the process of mentoring Johnny's son and enlists him as his first student at Miyagi-Do and quickly becomes Robbie's father figure, which only intensifies tensions between him and Johnny. Would Daniel have gone through all of these efforts if Robbie wasn't related in some way to Johnny? Daniel is pouring all of his time and energy while sacrificing both his business and marriage all to train Robbie and use Robbie to relive his past. Robbie is also not entirely innocent in this battle either. Cobra Kai shows him to have the same traits as a younger Daniel, and we were rooting for him to be the future hero of Miyagi-Do. But are Robbie's intentions pure in joining Miyagi-Do? Robbie knows his father's hatred for Daniel and decides to seek out employment and mentorship of his father's enemy to clearly anger his father. 
When he finds out I'm working for him, he's gonna lose his shit. Robbie uses lies and deceit to further his end goal, payback for his father's neglect. The revolving Sam, Miguel, and Robbie love triangle, all about balance. As we learn from Daniel's waterboard balance lesson for Robbie and Sam, life is all about balance. And the same goes with the balance of romance between these young characters. Throughout the course of the series, Sam's affections change to whomever the viewer perceives to be the hero at the time. As Miguel falls to the dark side of Cobra Kai's teachings and begins to exhibit some of the no mercy type tendencies, we begin rooting for a romance to build between Robbie and Sam, an end between Sam and Miguel. As viewers, we want Sam, the hero's daughter, to be paired with a hero herself. And that is ever changing in the world of Cobra Kai. As we have seen, Robbie doesn't exactly have a clean track record, and our perception of Robbie only gets worse when Robbie kicks Miguel over the school balcony, causing near-life-threatening injuries. How will Sam feel about Robbie after his actions towards Miguel in Season 2's cliffhanger episode? Will she leave him, as he is now in a villain's light? Is there hope for Miguel and Sam to rekindle their romance in the future if and when Miguel recovers? Kree slithers back into the dojo. By playing on Johnny's heartstrings, Kreese returns to the Cobra Kai dojo and once again begins his manipulation of Johnny and abuses Johnny's trust in order to teach his style of Cobra Kai to the dojo students. By the end of the second season, we learn that Kreese's tactics are successful as he eventually gains control of the business from Johnny's hands. Kreese has his own redemption story which makes us feel emotions for his character. We learn that Kreese has suffered a downfall since the closure of Cobra Kai and that the structure of the dojo is what he needs to survive. We learn that he has been living in homeless shelters for the past 30 years and seems truly vulnerable. We even feel sorry for Kreese for a moment, as he shows us that he is only a shell of the man that he used to be. Lest we forget that Kreese is a master manipulator and has his own agenda when it comes to the Cobra Kai dojo. The snake doesn't sleep. He stays awake. Kreese has all of the qualities and tendencies of a snake and attacks with all of his venom when Johnny is vulnerable as he wages a coup d'etat when he capitalizes on the aftermath of the school brawl and quickly enlists a number of Johnny's students. We learn that Tori, Hawk, Stingray, and others blame Johnny for teaching them to be too soft by living in Johnny Lawrence's gray area by demonstrating mercy. Miguel showed mercy for a moment in his final battle with Robbie and nearly died. Kreese uses Miguel's life-threatening injury as evidence that Johnny's Cobra Kai is weak weak and dangerous. He believes that he is a true hero, molding these young students to become warriors in his war against Miyagi-Do. The world needs Cobra Kai. Do you think that there are any heroes in Cobra Kai? What are your thoughts on whether the season two cliffhanger will force Johnny and Daniel to heroically team up and cast their differences aside to oust Kreese? Perhaps forged from that partnership will be the true heroes that Cobra Kai needs. Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more Cobra Kai content. Wax off for now.